Hey everybody. So I have a word for those of you that feel like you are stuck in a battle. I'm Desiree Swift and the Lord is putting this on my heart for some of you. I know there's some of you out there that are facing a battle right now and you just feel weak and you feel powerless and you feel like it's never going to end. And the word that I have for you, heavy from the Lord, is that the battle is not yours to fight. You're not winning this thing because it's not yours to fight. The battle belongs to the Lord. And that comes straight from scripture, from 2 Chronicles 20. A little bit of background on this is that about seven months ago when our son was facing uh, his cancer-like disease that was eating through his skull and he required brain surgery and then he needed a bunch more, two full days of full body testing, CT scans, PET scans, MRIs, x-rays, ultrasound, genetics testing, you name it, he had it. Because this disease can go anywhere in the body and it's like cancer. It, it travels like that and it eats through the tissue like cancer. So we needed to make sure it wasn't anywhere else in his body. It felt like a battle. For months it felt like a battle from the brain surgery and the complications and needing a second surgery and all the testing. We weren't afraid, we weren't worried. It was just a battle. It felt like a constant like attack on our family. But we knew that it wasn't a battle that we could fight alone. We were relying on the Lord's strength. But when we were in that hospital room for those two days and he was getting all that testing done, a friend of mine who I hadn't heard from in a while, she randomly texted me and she said, I think the scripture is for you. And it was Second Chronicles 20, 17, and it's saying how the battle belongs to the Lord. You don't need to fight. You just stand, worship the Lord, pray, and he will fight your battle for you. And first off, my right, right away, I was like, oh, shoot, God, like, are you preparing us? Are, are we going to get a diagnosis that the disease is somewhere else in his body? Like, I have to stand firm and keep fighting because we felt like we were at the end of it at that point. But then 10 minutes later in this book that I'm reading about the God still doing miracles and how he split the Red Sea and just all the cool things that he does. Uh, Second Chronicles 2015 was in there about how not to be afraid, not to be discouraged because the battle belongs to the Lord. So I want to read some of it here for you. I have it all highlighted because it's just it's a really special passage to me. But the word for you is that that battle you're trying to fight. That battle that you are just white knuckling it, trying to force your way through. That battle is not yours. It is the Lord's to fight. And we see in 2 Chronicles the posture that we are supposed to take. We're not supposed to take the white knuckling posture. We're supposed to take the posture that King Jehoshaphat did where he got on his face before the Lord. Where he and his people sought the Lord because they were being faced by huge armies. There were three armies in this story that ended up fighting each other. So here is 2 Chronicles 20, 15. This is where the King Jehoshaphat and his people were like, they, they came up to God and they said, God, what can we do? This is impossible for us to fight on our own. And God's spirit came down upon a man and a man gave this word. He said, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army for the battle is not yours, but God's. And he said, tomorrow, go out there and watch. Watch what the Lord does. Here's verse 17 that my friend sent me. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. So your position in the battle that you are currently facing, hi Terry, in the battle that you are currently facing, your position is a position of surrender to the Lord's power and authority. This battle in your life is the Lord's. So what does that look like as far as how, how do you do that? Take it to prayer. Turn on worship music and dance away that stress and that worry. Open your hands. Hey, Sarah, good to see you on here. Um, open your hands up to the Lord in surrender. And say, Lord, this battle is not mine. My kid's salvation is not my battle to fight. This chronic illness is not my battle to fight. This broken relationship is not my battle to fight. Lord, it is yours. And what I think is amazing in this passage, if you continue reading down, it says, at that very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the armies, these three big armies, 
to start fighting amongst themselves. They were fighting each other. They weren't even fighting King Jehoshaphat and his army. Every single one of them was killed. Not one enemy was left standing. And this had significance to us because we found out that our son didn't have any more of the disease in his body. And it could be one cell that travels somewhere else in his body with that disease and it creates a whole nother cluster that needs to be taken out with surgery or treated with chemo. So to us it was significant because we had gotten on our knees, we had surrendered our son and his health, we had surrendered our battle to the Lord and said, Lord, this is your battle to fight. We are going to worship you. We are going to praise you. We are going to thank you for your victory. We were given peace. We were given hope. We were given joy even in the midst of that suffering. And God made it so that not even one enemy cell of that disease was left standing in our son's body, which is actually kind of unusual. That Typically, it travels somewhere else in the body. So we're thankful it was only that one spot on his skull. But I want you to carry that with you today. Second Chronicles 20. Go read the whole chapter. It is so powerful because we see that our position to take is not the one with swords and spears and fighting. We are to stand firm wearing the armor of God. That's in Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. We see the armor of God. We are to stand firm with the helmet and the chest plate and the, the shield and the sword and the belt and the shoes and all the armor God gives us. We're to stand firm in that so it stops the attacks of the enemy. But God has limitless armies that fight our battles for us. We just have to stop trying to control them and stop trying to fight them ourselves and let the Lord fight them. So I want to pray for you right now that you will surrender your battles over to the Lord. So Heavenly Father, for all those that are listening live and listening later, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will stir in them and that you will give them that confidence and that courage that they can open their hands up to you in surrender saying, Lord, this is not my battle to fight. I cannot win this battle without you. So Father God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Almighty Victor, that has never lost a battle, by the way. You have never lost a battle, Father. And we know that you win the big one at the end, so we thank you for that. But Lord, I trust you with this battle. I trust you with what I am facing because this army facing me is too big for me. But you, God, are mighty, you are victorious, and I trust that you will bring victory in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. See you later. The battle belongs to the Lord.